Yeah, I just wanted to bring people up to date on this campaign. Uh, as you know, the Security Council at the UN has 15 members, five of which are permanent. And those would be the big powers, right? United States, UK, France, China, and Russia. But there's also 10 non-permanent seats, and these switch around. They uh, vote them in for two years, uh, five at a time. So there's five uh, openings right now, and Canada is trying to uh, gain one of them. So I think the first thing is, I think we're all aware that, you know, in the UN, as in all other of these kinds of organizations, the decision making is being, you know, concentrated in fewer and fewer hands. First of all, the General Assembly is being replaced by the Security Council as the decision, main decision making body. And then within that uh, uh, Security Council, we have basically five countries who make the decisions. The main one, of course, being the U.S., which is able to put pressure on any country that doesn't fall into line, even the ones that you know they seem to be opposed to. So the election is in October, and what Canada had to do was, first of all, get nominated by its region. Okay, so there's regional groupings, but in the end, they have to be uh, uh, voted in by the whole body of the UN. So. Harper has been uh, basically running a campaign in order to get elected there. And his main focus has been on Africa, because this is where the swinging of the votes is going to take place. So you may have noticed that, you know, he's been giving out money to Africa, and he made his speech about his uh, big plan to assist uh, women and children in Africa, as long as nobody practices any kind of family planning which is, you know, another good example of how the whole world has to follow his values or they can't be supported. So he's waging this campaign in order to gain these African votes. And of course, this campaigning isn't all in the open. You know, there are meetings that are held, but a lot of it is deals made in back rooms and so forth. So part of this campaign was that uh, Harper made a speech at the UN on Tuesday. And I thought it was uh, fit very well with what we're discussing today because the whole rationale that he gave in two-thirds of his speech for Canada getting a Security Council seat was Canada's record in Afghanistan. Now you may find this uh, ludicrous, but this is what he's campaigning on. But Canada has done such a great job of restoring democracy in Afghanistan that they've shown you know, that they're a, a real leader of the world's people, so therefore they should be elected to this seat. And Tony and Peggy you know, outlined all the crimes that have been committed in Afghanistan, fully supported by Canada, and you know other things that have happened on the international scene, such as the unqualified support for what Israel does. So, at the moment, uh, the campaign is being waged right in uh, New York, and uh, of course, cabinet ministers are involved too. So this is what uh, one can uh, watch out for. I think the vote takes place in about a, a week or two. I don't have the exact date. And, of course, you know, if you look at it from the point of view that the UN should represent the world's people and that all its bodies should represent the world's people, then Harper's getting Canada on there at this time is uh, not in the interest of the world people. What will Canada do? Mainly they'll tail behind the United States. They won't be a voice. They'll simply be an echo. So, as the polls have shown, most Canadians oppose this campaign and we should too. Canada should not have a seat on the Security Council because they will not be working in the interests of the world people once they're positioned on it.